All right, hi y'all. We have some faux pas. Welcome to another, another episode of Zenny's Tea and Tea Kitchen. So today, you know, usually at um, we do things backwards here. So tonight on the menu, we're going to be making uh, baked chicken with uh, macaroni pie. So I decided that I was going to film and whatnot because I haven't been feeling well. So this weekend was just more a rest and relaxation and more of, you know, trying to get everything together. Like I said, we had moved and everything and um, just trying to get the space together. So I think I have accomplished what I needed to accomplish. Um, later on, you will see um, what you need to see. But in the meantime, again, we are doing on the menu tonight baked chicken with uh, macaroni pie. And I don't have the spaghetti for the macaroni pie. So as we always do in Denny's TNT Kitchen, use what you have. So in the meantime, let us begin. I'm going to start with uh, the block cheeses because I've been learning that the pre-shredded cheeses has a, um, a powder on it that causes it not to melt so well when you're cooking with it so the block cheeses are good so I'm going to do you know some sharp cheddar some extra sharp cheddar and a little bit of mozzarella right two is as well you know we're gonna keep it authentic because it is a macaroni pie we're going to do some um, some bell peppers with some some of my booties pimento sauce that's going in there that's a must um i thought i had regular mustard i don't know where it went so i'm going to be using uh dijon mustard just to kick it up just a notch and um yeah that's going to be it on my barbecue chicken i'm going to keep it simple it's just chicken breast um let me walk up and show you so right now true to trini silence if you could see here i am doing what i'm supposed to do with my chicken so even though it is chicken breast i'm still going to wash it in the lime and some water just to you know first of all it cleans it second of all it tenderizes it believe it or not and it opens up the pores just a little bit to receive all that flavor so let's get ready um the first thing that i'm going to do is prep I've got my block cheese. Oh, I have a little bit of cheese here. We don't waste. We're not gonna waste. We're Trinadians. Trinadians don't waste at all. So, I have a little bit of pepper jack cheese. I love, let me tell you all, I love pepper jack cheese because it adds that flavor to anything that you're making. Even if you're making a sandwich, that pepper jack cheese is thebomb.com, okay? So, I have that. I have my bowl here that's all ready and prepped to go to receive my cheese. Now mind y'all, I'm yet to try to make a non-dairy version of the mac and cheese. Um, macaroni pie, sorry. I'm yet, I'm very apprehensive about <laughs> some non-dairy products, but believe it or not, I have been, you know, I've had to shut my mouth on certain things because I've actually had no, uh, vegan meat and it blew me away. So, and we're already taking almond milk as it is. So that is a staple here. We don't do whole milk or things like that too much um, in our system because our systems are not prepared for it here in this house. I have some visitors here, so we're gonna pause for a second. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, better. so come on, Eli, let's go. I am prepping. I think Bob's waiting for me. <laughs> I am prepping, so I'm now grating my uh, cheddar cheese. I already grated some of my sharp, extra sharp cheddar. I love cheddar cheese. If it's one thing I do love, I love cheddar cheese. And the cheesier, the better. So 
So yes, I did use the whole block of cheese. Push comes to shove, I can always put what I don't use in the freezer. But um, I tend not to use a lot of cheese, but I think today I'm going to splurge because I want to make this as authentic to uh, the Trinidadian recipe as possible. All right, so I've got my little bit of pepper jack, my extra sharp white cheddar, and then my uh, sharp cheddar cheese. All right, y'all, so I am done with my cheeses. So now I'm going to get my water boiling, which I should have I should have done, but you know what? Trial and error. I wanted to, you know, this is my meditation time without having to rush in and get the water and everything. So everything in a time and everything in its pace. So I'm going to boil my pasta, get that ready. Um, I'm debating whether I want to make a roux or whether I just want to just keep this simple. So we will see as it goes along. Um, it is after five, close to six, so you know, I'm not going to be doing no big prepping because it is a weeknight. So you want to get in, get out. All right, so that is what we are about to do. All right, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties, so hopefully this will translate. Um, and we'll let it do what it what it does okay so in the meantime I did go ahead and I seasoned my chicken so I have it in a nice little marinade here um, my marinade includes some fresh shadowbeni fresh garlic minced up um, some chives and some minced scotch bonnet pepper along with half of a tomato that I diced up um, some grated ginger some thyme then I went ahead and I busted down with a bottle, you know, a couple uh, tablespoons of our green seasoning um, and some orange juice to give it just a little, you know, give the marinade a little acidity right there. And to balance it out, I'm going to add a little bit of honey to it, a couple splashes of bitters, which is, you know, the thing that you would find in any Caribbean household when you're doing anything. So the bitters go into it. And um, that is about it. So I'm just going to give it a couple splashes. A couple of this delicious honey. Just put some sweetness in it. And just to amp up the flavor just a little bit. Oh, I did put in the some adobo for the salt effect and some black pepper. Not too much. All right. So I hit it with some honey. And I am going to clean up and get squared away. All right. So while I went ahead and I'm marinating that chicken for about 15, 20 minutes, um, I put my fire on for the pasta to boil. I'm going to be using thick spaghetti. I couldn't find the very thick ones that we used to be getting from that. So I compromised and got the thick spaghetti. So I'm going to use about maybe the entire box, maybe not. <laughs> um, and I'm going to fuse the two dishes together. Of course, you know, the ingredients are going to combine to put the same thing. So I'm going to add in, of course, some chavaveni, the garlic, the chives, um, the scotch on the pepper, of course. I'm going to put a little bit of ginger in there. Like I said, some Dijon mustard and um, some cheese, cheese and that would be cement, of course, you know. Yeah, I get better than that. All right, so stay tuned for more. We come in for some. Peace. All right, and we're back. Oh, I tell you, this filming thing is something else. All right, so I am 
my condensate, don't worry about that. I have some evaporated milk. I did decide to go ahead and kind of do the rule like the old time people used to do um, with the evaporated milk, the flour, the butter. Um, I'm not gonna do an egg. So in the meantime, my pasta is cooking. I decided to leave it long. Just to kind of, you know, give it that authenticity that we are accustomed to just a little bit because we use, um, we leave the pasta long. Most people, I would say, leave the pasta long. So while that is cooking, and of course you have to cook it al dente to the tooth, um, because it is going to cook somewhere, nobody likes a mushy macaroni pie. So um, while this is being prepped, I have it on medium low. I added some salt to the water. Um, I'm going to start prepping just a little bit. I'm also going to put in, I didn't have carrots, so I'm going to put in, you know, some sweet pepper. You know, we like everything colorful in Trinidad. So usually you, do, you would have um, some red and green peppers along with some carrots. Some people, my grandmother used to just grate up a little bit of carrots and put it in there. Um, green peppers are good, all right? Um, let's see, what else am I adding to that? I think that is it. So the evaporated milk, some flour, oh, some butter, I did say butter. Um, some of the, the seasoning in there, I'm also going to put in that Bertie's uh, pimento pepper just to give it a little oomph. What the Bertie's does, I find in my opinion, um, what pimento peppers does um, in general, in my opinion, is that if you're putting, adding scotch bonnet pepper, I feel like it notches the flavors up just a little bit because pimento peppers are not hot. They have all the flavor of a hot pepper but none of the burn that you would get, right? So that's why I love pimentos and I, that's why Trinidadians love pimentos because it actually amplifies the flavors of anything that you're cooking with. So it is a must, a staple in a lot of uh, authentic Trinidadian Tobago dishes, right? Um, so of course we have that. So I'm going to prep my pepper down I don't know if you guys are able to see my workstation here if not then this part will be edited out of course so I core my peppers just to get rid of the seeds and the um the thick bottoms a quick rinse. I'm wipe it down. Dry it just a little bit. I'm trying to get these as uniform as possible. And that white, the thick white part. I get I just get rid of just to make sure everything is more or less the same size and I'm not going to use a lot but I want it to be thick enough diced up thick enough so that I'm able to see it in the macaroni by itself I spent today, I took the day off today um, to deal with some health issues that I have. But in the meantime, you know, you can't keep a good, a good woman dog for long. See, I didn't stumble on that. <laughs> so I took today and I did what I kept saying that I was going to do and going to do. I sharpened all my knives. So they should be doing the right thing <laughs> now. And um, it's a joy. It was actually a little bit of, of good meditation for me um, to shop any knives. And my son was like, are you, are you okay? You good? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> long time the old people you say use stone so that's my next um investment there to get a uh, 
a shopper's uh, butcher's stone, I guess that's what it's called, a sharpening stone. This is a must. Anytime you're doing anything from a can to wipe the top, my mom would yell at me if I opened up a, a, a can of anything without washing the top out. I should always used to say, you don't know what's in that, those warehouses. And you can, one thing I do know for sure is that there's going to be a lot of pests and whatnot. So you can't trust that, you know, everything that's coming is going to come in clean. So, you know, better to be safe than sorry. So again, I did shake my can up because you want to, you know, loosen all, you want to make sure that everything is mixed all together because usually anything that's heavy is going to sink at the bottom. So you want to shake it up, give it a good shake. Okay. And I am going to check on my pasta. Up my fire a little bit more. Okay, there we go. All right. So we good to go on that. The extras, I'm just going to bag it up and use it for later. Oh, I just might just throw in a little bit with my um with my chicken. Speaking of which, so it's already marinated. What I'm going to do now is let it rest out here until it comes to room temperature. Um, that's a must. You must bring your meat to room temperature. I mean, you could, you could just throw it in if you're pressed for time, right? But to ensure even cooking, um, room temperature is best. I'm not here to tell people what to do. I'm just gonna, you know, give you suggestions. Jenny, CNC suggestions, things that have Works for me from a uh, child era, lots of eras. <laughs> so, all right. So while I clean up, I'm going to make sure um, that is going to come to room temp. I'm going to finish with my pasta, and we're going to get it crack a lock in. All righty. Okay, so I went ahead and I drained my pasta. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make my simple roux. So, um, I have exactly two tablespoons of butter in here, unsalted butter. That way I can, you know, handle the salt. I can do what I need to do with the salt. Whatever the word is right now, I can't remember it. So bear with me, guys. All right, so I'm gonna heat my pot, bring my pot back up to a warm temperature. Then I'm going to add my two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of flour, which I'm going to whisk for about one to two minutes. Um, I don't want to burn it, so, and of course I cannot find, oh, my whisk. All right, so I'm going to go ahead to the pot and I'm just using the same pot just for the time and space the same pot that I took the uh, the pasta out of all right I remember growing up watching my grandmother every time I prepare things like these it transports me right back to you know the 80s and the 90s just watching my grandmother do all this stuff. My grandmother woke up at like four in the morning, right? And she would start prepping, she would start prep to cook. Sometimes she would prep from the night before, depending on what it was that she was making for the next day, right? The stewed chicken and everything. Um, she would have that Usually she would cut up a chicken and have that in the freezer waiting so she would just bram 
just drop it, you know, get it, throw it out and put it in the pot or whatever. But she would do that from the night before. All right, so my butter is frothed. So now I'm going to add, ooh, we almost had a mishap. I kind of temper my flour in there. And what did I put? Oh. All right. Okay. So I'm stirring up. I'm whisking. Because you want to make sure that the flour is incorporated into the butter so that it's cooked and you don't get that flour taste that nutty or burnt flour taste. So now that that is in there, I'm going to go ahead and put in my evaporated milk. That's about a can right there, eyeball. I'm going to whisk that up and I'm going to turn this e, the fire down even lower. And once this gets to not boiling but to a good temperature because you don't want it to boil because otherwise the fat is going to start skimming and you don't want that. All right, so you just want to get it because I added um evaporated milk that was at room temperature you just want to get the temperature a little higher where it would actually melt the cheese one thing that i took from my food and nutrition class with miss Niz, and i have to again i have to give miss Niz her props her flowers while she is alive she taught us so much and she made she made it fun to learn and she always there was always a correlation between all the subjects that we were doing whether it was you know food and nutrition with math food and nutrition with biology food and nutrition with chemistry whatever it was she always made sure that the correlation was there and that we understood it so i say that to say there's always a science to cooking and i give miss Ms. her props for giving me that joy with not only learning, setting the bar high for expectations, but just an all around, just open me up to enjoy the experience that I'm having right now. So Miss Nurse, great job. Thank you for so many years putting up with me because Lord knows to put up with Zenobia <laughs> was something else in high school. So I thank you. I thank you for always sticking behind me. All right, so I can see, because it's steaming just a little bit, and you can smell it. That's how the old people knew what they were doing in the kitchen. They smell everything. So it's ready for the cheeses. And I'm going to leave some of this for the top. All right? So I'm going to add more of the mozzarella. Uh oh, and this is my sharp cheddar. And my jalapeno is hiding. We don't waste. My stove is clean, y'all. I have to clean before I hit anything, you know, because again, thank you to Miss Miss for that's the, the prep. The prep, your, your place must be clean before you cook because you never know when something will drop when you have to stick it back into the pot right okay so that should be good to stop Cheese melted. 
and look at this nice creamy cheese sauce. Oh, can you zoom in? Yeah. Uh, in the beginning when you said you're my dishwasher? Mm -hmm. I ain't so slave, bruh. My son was offended because I called him my dishwasher. But that's okay. All right, so I have to get a bigger pan. My chicken is at room temp. So I am just going to lay him out right here. Actually. Even though we're not frying it as much, and I'm going to pass it down just a little bit. <clears throat> I'm not going to take out too much of this juice. I'm not sure if you can hear me over the water. My extra one. I don't know what he doing. He leave me. He abandoned ship today, right? Usually he is my cameraman, but I have it set up where <laughs> my camera is um on a pedestal. So he he jumps ship real fast, huh? Until it he starts spelling it, and he will start coming and peeping in. You can finish, you know. Normal vibes, not. Nah. When draining your pasta, I always, always leave back some of my pasta water in case I may need it for something, right? Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna just toss it into the my big chicken. Um, ooh, speaking of which, so I have to preheat my oven to 375. I did double check before, but I always want to make sure that my oven has nothing in it because I tend to just shove things in there, trying to make space sometimes. All right, so. All right, taste tester, grab a spoon. Look at that. Okay. Put some salt. I have a 
about a teaspoon of salt here. I don't think I'm going to use the whole thing. And then I have half a teaspoon of paprika. That I'm going to use. For you all to see, I know my fire is so that is my cheese sauce. All right, so I'm going to make a nice, thick, and round macaroni pie. Okay. in this round dish all right and now turn this off by an angel y'all remember that show too i don't know if i could be saying these things <laughs> i'm just i'm not going to put too much ginger i just want to have a little bit of a bite okay and of course some time we always have time for time right always I know I'm corny y'all but they add to my my episodes so you know I'm yet still to find some more of the Spanish time which is what we really use in Trinidad the big broadleaf thyme and i i found out a few weeks back that there's so many different names for it um chinese thyme chinese leaf uh you have cuban oregano spanish oregano so so many different names for it all right y'all see in the color jeez <sighs> Okay, so let me just take a taste here. 
I was trying to be greedy. salt and a paprika 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 however you just want to say it you could say it My grandmother used to um, combine it with some egg, but I think the cheese and, and the evaporated milk are good binding agents in itself. Okay, so now to this. Make sure it's even. Okay, and I'm going to bless the top some of this cheese. It's a blessing, it's a blessing. It is truly a blessing to be able to do this, to wake up every morning and just be able to do this because it bridges the gap, old and new. And it helps me remember what I think is just a just couple years ago. It's umpteenth years, you know, just got off the phone with my cousin. Only to realize we hadn't seen each other in 30 years. Yes, Ole Hammer. Three zero. So, what I think is right around the corner is really not. Okay. So that jam session done right there. I can save this. Just pop these two in there. Okay, so I have ginger for little. And my dishwasher. It's about to come back. So my oven has preheated at 375. I'm going to plop this. Since this is a large container and it's around six dish. I'm going to cook this, so I'm going to check it at the 35 minute interval, but I am guessing that it will take about 40 minutes for everything to go down and go down good. Alright, so when I plop that in, what I'm going to do is take my chicken out, put it in a pan, and stick them in there together. Alright y'all. So while my son is cleaning up, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my meat situated. It's at room temperature. Okay. Mmm. Smells so good. And it's just simple chicken breast. I think I need a bigger <laughs> pan. You sure enough? to cover this up with foil. Those I will do afterwards. You wash my hands. Excuse me. So sorry. Walk time. Not long. <laughs> 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 
Yo, know, Titty Baby, he's tricking me, right? Mm -hmm. What's that called? She's calling me the dishwasher. That is the thing that she said, I'm her slave. I'm a slave now. You're my... I don't have an actual dishwasher, so would the... Would the tool of dishwasher be my slave? You are my dishwasher. You're my dishwasher. You're my garbage picker poster. You're my errand boy sometimes. I mean, what? Errand. You run some errands for me. No. All right. Well, this is going to sprout its own liquid. So I will leave her address. But in the meantime, in the meantime, All right, so I have my beautiful macaroni pie in here. I actually um, put some spray spray butter on the top so that it doesn't stick, the cheese doesn't stick to it as much. All right, I know that. All right, so I'm going to cut my time off. Uh, the first one that I'm going to do is for 20 minutes for my chicken. And I'm going to keep a good eye on it. Okay? Alright. So, here I have the chicken. Yes. She white. Okay. She cooked not so not all the way so i'm gonna go ahead and baste this with some barbecue sauce because we are making baked barbecue chicken and just give me a little sneak peek at the bubbling action inside of here now look at that look at that, look at that. she's not ready as yet but you see how bubbling let's see all right so i'm going to leave her covered and i'm going to get ready to baste all right, so I took that macaroni. Do not stick your hand in there. <laughs> I just took the macaroni pie out of the oven. There are my chicken cutlets, the barbecue chicken cutlets, macaroni pie. I'm going to prep my salad. And of course, in true Zenny CNT kitchen style, I'm going to show you when it's all plated and done. So, but in the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you for once again joining us here at Zenny's TNT Kitchen, where you will always find an explosion of island flavors.